Hello, it's Keith here. So we've got a new toy we're going to be having a look at. I'm going to be doing an unboxing of this Texas Instruments Type 84 CE Plus. Now, this is one I've just bought recently. It's unfortunately quite expensive. I paid 17,000 yen, which is about $150 for it. Now, there is a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, it is quite expensive. And the other problem is that this is not very popular in Japan. So um, you, you kind of have to buy import in some way. Now, I think this is a gray import. I don't think it's been approved for Japan because it's a bit battered up, even though it's brand, brand new. And um, I've seen it for sale uh, for more like $300, $400. So why have I bought this? Well, this becomes with the EZ80 processor, which is the 24-bit um, address bus version of the 8-bit Z80. I believe it's still considered an 8-bit processor. But it's something I've been playing around with recently. Um, and there is another problem with this device, unfortunately. This version you can compile assembly onto, hopefully, but the new firmware OS they've released, which is 5.5, I believe, is does no longer have the ability to run assembly, so you can no longer compile your own programs onto it. So I thought I'd better buy one quick while the option was still there. Um, hopefully this has got the earlier version of the OS on it, judging from the fact it looked quite old and the new OS only came out last month. So we're going to open this up, we're going to have a go with it and see what it's like. Okay, let's um, let's go ahead and open it up some kind of blister packaging here. I don't know if there's a particular entry point into it. Um, let's just tear it open across the top, maybe. So the EZ80, the EZ80 um, I believe it's maybe as much as 50 megahertz, but it's actually faster than the original processor megahertz for megahertz as well. So um, it's a very powerful processor. It's a little bit tricky to program. There is a fantastic emulator for it. So we've got a um, a USB cable here, it's the standard type it looks like, which is nice. So the original device needed a special cable. Okay, and it's, oh, I'm gonna make one else that. I'm a bit confused by that. Is it just two, are they both the same? Or are they slightly different? Okay, maybe I spoke too soon there. Maybe it's not standardized. A bit, I'm a bit confused what that is. It, it looks like, it looks like a, um, this looks similar to a regular USB cable, but I don't think it is. I think it's slightly different, maybe. I need to have a look at that in more detail later. So I'm a bit confused by that. Maybe it's, maybe it's for connecting to, um, maybe, maybe it is the same and it's just the two sides are different for some reason. We've got some manuals, rare thing these days. Um, what we've got here, we've got our, a charge, maybe that's just for charging then. Maybe that's just a charge cable. We've got an AC adapter there, but it's just a standard USB, hopefully. Let's have some weird gubbins in there. And we've got the device itself. So it sort of says it comes with a case and it just it means like the hard case, which um, you know, I've got nothing against there. You know, it'll do the job, hopefully. And here's the calculator itself. Okay, so um, we've got the USB in there. Got some kind of light there, I guess. Um, we chose replaceable battery one hopes and the amount I paid for it I'm hoping to get a good few years of life out of it so hopefully we can swap the battery if the battery wears out okay um, let's uh, where's the okay it's just a soft button here okay validating the OS the OS is encrypted and it's version 5.4 grief that's newer than I expected I was expecting this to come with 5.3 okay well hopefully that's okay um, so if I press the um, this two, can you see that? Okay, it's turning again. There we go. Sorry. The, so if I press the two here and the catalog button down here, oh, so we've got the ASM option there, which is the one that we need because otherwise. I, I believe that will be missing on the new version. So if, you, if you've got that, I think you're okay. As I say, 5.4, I believe is fine. 5.3, obviously the early ones are also okay. Um, the later ones are not okay. Okay, so I've changed my bike, the settings a bit so you can see the screen better now. So um, it does look like the two ends of this are the same plug. They both connect to the device, okay. And one's marked A and the other's marked B. So I think this is for connecting two calculators together for a host to guest transfer from one machine to another. So um, that, that makes a bit more sense. I was a bit worried as to whether it needed a special cable for charging or something strange. But um, okay, um, I think the machine itself is um, it's very powerful. Um, it's got a color screen 
and um, it's it's sort of true color almost so and I believe the process is very fast so um, we can you can see we've got a lot of different colors here so and we can do our formulas here if we just um, do y equals x times 2 for example and then do enter and just draw that as a graph you can see we've got a blue line going up here and as I say the screen is now basically almost true it's 16 15 16 bit color so it's very very good screen on this machine and um, I believe the process is very fast okay so what I'm going to do now I'm going to try and um, install the software and we're going to see if we can get one of my little programs transferred over to it okay so I've had to reboot my machine I was trying to get it to work earlier and it wasn't so we'll give it a go now I've installed the software an amazing hundred megabytes of software to connect a um, basically COM port device which is funny because my first PC didn't have 100 megabytes of hard drive so load up the software and it says connect one or more graphing calculators I got my USB cable here and we're gonna plug in over here and see what happens hopefully something will happen okay yeah we've got a device now so we can capture the screen I don't think we want to do that what options we got here okay so this is the contents of the RAM here so we've got all of the stuff that's contained within the device now if I open my window here I'll just get this on the screen just a moment now I have got a program file here that I've compiled on my emulator and hopefully we can transfer it to the device I don't know how we do this okay so we've got many options just off screen here so we've got term prog xp so we're going to transfer to ram that's what we want i think so if we click send and hopefully that was it okay so i'll just unplug this maybe okay let's unplug that and i don't think we need to use the assembly command anymore we used to have to use it but i think now we can just run the program directly and there we go it's worked okay so I don't know if you can see there, um, we've got a picture of my little Chibico character in the corner here. That's my bitmap test. That's a 15-bit bitmap. And we've got, a, this is an assembly dump using the Chibiacum's font, which has been converted to the pixel screen because uh, I could use a smaller font then. This screen's 320 by 240, really high resolution screen. So uh, very nice there. And uh, I'm very happy with that uh, because that validates. Firstly, it proves my program works and it proves I've bought the right calculator. Could, would, you, would you believe? The TIE 84 range, there's a TIE 84 Plus, TIE 84 CE, and there's all kinds of other weird things. And they're all completely different devices with completely different ranges of specifications. So I was a bit, a bit concerned when I was buying this that I might be buying a completely wrong device and wasting my money, but um, I have not. I have the right device, and I'm very happy with that, despite the slightly high cost, but um, I'll be fair on them. Um, I've got a TIE 83, but I wasn't willing to buy the um, USB cable for it because it was about $50 alone. So um, even though I got the TIE, for, the TIE 83 very cheap, I wasn't willing to pay for the cable that allowed me to actually run my programs on it. So even though this is a much more expensive calculator, firstly it's better, and now you can just use a generic USB cable. So overall it's not so bad, and you know it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I mean, just to summarize, you know, if you if you can justify the money and you want a, a little um, handheld device for your programming especially if you are interested in the um, EZ80 um, it's worth considering but you do need to make sure you get the right version because you can't use the versions that have got the OS 5.5 and later they, they won't be able to run the assembly at least that's how it seems at the moment so buyer beware um, if you can get an old one um, maybe maybe they'll be kind and ship them with the old os uh, it doesn't seem likely being this is a this is a lot newer than i expected i was expecting it to only be five five point three or something i thought it would be quite old os on it so i guess they're going to start shipping them with the um non-asm os built in which would be a shame but anyway as i say um from the point of view of the device i've got very happy with it a little bit expensive but you know it's for what i'm going to do with it i can't complain because um you know, trying to buy an easy 8T processor-based system is virtually impossible anyway, and one that's self-contained like this with a built-in keyboard, built-in display, built-in battery, you know, you can't complain. So, yep, yeah, there we go. So that's the TIE 84. I'll be um, playing around with it, and hopefully I'll be able to do some EZ80 tutorials at some point. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching today, and goodbye.